हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू द ऑप्टिकल सोर्सेज सो वॉट आर द सोर्सेज वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सोर्सेज विच टाइप ऑफ सोर्स वी आर यूजिंग एट अ पर्टिकुलर एप्लीकेशन ऑल दीज थिंग्स वी आर गोइंग टू सी फर्दर वी आर गोइंग टू सी द वेरियस करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द ऑप्टिकल सोर्सेज एज वेल so this video is going to be really interesting one and i hope all of you are watching this video with utmost attention and i hope all of you have watched all of the previous videos also because this is a playlist and you must watch it from the playlist video one only so let's start our discussion on the optical source so now what is optical source optical source is a active component of the optical communication system what do you mean by the active component active component is the one which is giving the power or it is related with the power right so the source or the optical source is the active component why because it is converting the electrical energy which is in the form of current so i am giving the electrical energy or i am giving the current and now the optical source is converting this electrical energy into the optical energy and now i can classify the optical sources into three types mainly right so these three types are the most important types we must understand where each one of them can be used what are the significance of each one of them the first type is the wide band continuous spectra source which are occurring in the nature naturally like the incandescent lamps so these are the lamps which are having the wide band frequency and this having the continuous spectra as well wide band means it is having a larger bandwidth or it is operational on a larger frequency range right so whenever i have a larger frequency range then my source won't be able to operate at a high data rate right it won't be able to turn on or off at a very fast rate it won't be able to modulate in a fast manner and this is the reason if i am using the natural sources which are wide band it is going to impact on the data rate it is going to reduce the data rate further the wide band sources as the name suggests it is a wide band source which means the bandwidth is large and when the bandwidth is large i would be having larger dispersion losses first the data rate is less second the dispersion losses are high which means i cannot use the natural light sources as the sources in the optical communication system so which light source i can use in the optical communication system i can use led or i can use lasers broadly i am going to talk about these two only so i have different classification for led and laser so what are led led are monochromatic incoherent source monochromatic means it is working or operational on a single frequency now laser is a monochromatic coherent source no during the early times when the fiber structure was not modified we were not knowing the purity of the fibers the various purification techniques to make a glass fiber which is highly pure in that time the attenuation and the other losses inside the fiber were very high and when the losses are very high i cannot use the incoherent source at that time the only possibility was to use the coherent source right so early stages most powerful narrow band coherent light sources were used we were not able to use the led in the early stages of the optical communication development right i hope you understood the reason now right so when i had the most powerful coherent light source like the helium neon laser which is also known as the gas laser 
I can easily use the gas laser but one problem was there associated with the gas laser, laser that it was very costly. I cannot use a very costly device in each and every optical communication system because of the cost constraints. Right? So now we were having the severe attenuation and the dispersion inside the fiber and due to the severe attenuation and dispersion I was not able to use the LED. We are going to talk about the first generation, the second generation and the later on optical fiber communication system in the last part of this video. So let's start discussion upon the various requirement or the characteristics for the optical fiber emitter. Emitter is also called the source. Right. So what are the various characteristics that a source must follow or what are the various requirements if I'm choosing a source I have to see all of these requirements. So let's see all of the requirements one by one. So first requirement is that we must have the proper size and the configuration which is compatible with the launching light. Okay, the light is going to launch inside the fiber and the size of the fiber should be compatible with this source or the light which is provided by this source. So when I have a source which is providing the light which is not compatible with this optical fiber the losses would be high that I don't want and this is the reason I am saying that whatever source I am using the fiber must have the compatible size and configuration with the source so as to avoid the losses. Whatever light I am using it must be highly directional so that it is not going outside the fiber there would be proper launching of the light inside the fiber only. The losses would be minimized. Second requirement is that it is going to accurately track the input signal to minimize the noise as well as attenuation as well as distortion. Right? So what I am going to do? I have to reduce the noise and the distortion and for that I am going to use a linear input source signal which is going to reduce the distortion and the various other noise and losses. Now whatever source I am going to use it is going to emit light at the wavelength where losses and the dispersion would be low and the detector are efficient. So in the first generation optical fiber communication I was using it in the optical window from 0.8 to 0.9 micrometer. I have told you here as well and here also you must understand in this window I will be having least losses and least distortion right and the detector would be highly efficient for the first generation in this window. So if I am talking about the first generation this window is okay. But you have to see the optical fiber and according to the optical fiber you have to choose the wavelength and according to the wavelength you have to choose the source. Different source will be giving light in the different wavelength and this is the reason for operating the particular optical fiber I have to choose a particular source only. Right. So it is going to emit light at the wavelength where loss and dispersion are low and the detector is efficient. I hope now you very well understood this statement. Right. So let's talk about the next requirement It is going to be capable of simple signal modulation over a wide bandwidth. Right. So why I require the modulation? I require modulation to transmit the signal over a longer distance and whatever light source I am using it is capable of the signal modulation as well. Otherwise I won't be able to do the long distance communication over a wider bandwidth. So this is a very important requirement which must be fulfilled. Now it is going to couple the significant amount of energy and power inside the fiber without inducing the losses which are due to the attenuation, the connector losses as well as the power to drive the detector. So without these losses it is going, the source is going to couple a lot of energy inside the fiber only so that I will be having a significant power which is reaching to the detector. 
right and this is the reason I will be increasing the signal to noise ratio. With the higher coupling of power inside the optical fiber, the signal amount inside the fiber would be increased and this is the reason SNR would be increased. So we will be having the narrow spectral bandwidth to minimize the dispersion. I told you we were talking about the three spectral windows. One was 850 micrometer, second was 1310 micrometer and third was a 1550 micrometer. We can work on these windows and here we will be getting least of the dispersion. So you can use any one of them, right? Or you have to choose the window in accordance to the fiber. Right? And according to the window, you have to choose the source. It is capable of maintaining stable optical output even at the changing ambient condition like the changing temperature. Right? The temperature cannot be constant inside the environment every time I am using the optical communication system. Sometimes I am using the optical fibers deep downside the seas as well. Deep down the sea, I have a very significant temperature fluctuation. So I will be having a source which is able to tolerate this temperature fluctuation as well. I hope you understood this point. And now the last point is comparatively cheap because I cannot give a lot of amount of money for a particular optical communication system. I will be preferring a communication system which is comparatively cheap as well as highly reliable. I can rely upon it. It is not going to fail in between. So it is highly reliable and it is going to compete with the conventional techniques of the communication. And these are all the requirement for the source. So let's discuss the various generation. So we have the first generation source as I told you, we are operating it in 0.8 to 0.9 micrometer range. At the 0.9 micrometer, if I am working, I will be getting large losses but I will be trying to keep it at 0.85 micrometer. At 0.85 micrometer, if I operate, I will be getting the best of the outcomes. So now if I am using LED over here, it is not suitable. Why it is not suitable? I already told you. LED is having wider spectral width as compared to the laser. Laser is having very narrow spectral width. LED is having the widest spectral width. So this is the first reason it is not going to use for long distance wideband transmission. Right? But it found use in the moderate distance application only. Because it is a low power source, the power of the LED is very less as compared to the laser. But the price of LED is also low as compared to the laser and it is also able to operate in a very highly changing environmental conditions like temperature. So this is the reason I am preferring to operate it in our optical communication system. So now after the invention of the multi-mode graded index fiber, I told you when I was talking about the losses, the, in the multi-mode graded index fiber, I was not having very high dispersion losses. We were having substantial reduction in the losses at 0.8 to 0.9 micrometer wavelength. So in this range, the LED was found very suitable for wideband applications. So whenever I have wideband applications, the moderate distance communication, I will be using the LED, right? So when I had the second generation fibers, in the second generation fiber, there were significant improve, improvements inside the fiber and its structure and its material, due to which we were having the losses which are further reduced. The dispersion, attenuation, all of the losses were reduced. And what was the operational bandwidth from 1.1 to 1.6 micrometer range? So this is a range of frequency over which we can use the second generation system here. LED sources can be used for the long distance communication also because the dispersion losses are significantly reduced due to the multi-mode fibers which are graded index fibers. So now here in the second generation system, I don't need to see that I have a long distance communication or short distance communication. I can use the LED according to the bandwidth requirement. If it is a wide bandwidth requirement, I can easily use the LED. Right. So LED are the simple construction devices. We can simply construct it. 
it is a diode right we all know the basics of the diode we can simply construct it there are very less technicalities associated with the led right so after that it is having the low cost which is also the requirement of our optical communication system it is having the extended lifetime plus it is having the trouble free free operations for its lifetime we are not having various troubles while we are operating the led so these are all of the advantages why we are preferring to use the led and this is a reason led is called the major multi mode source for wide bandwidth operation or wide bandwidth applications right so i hope you understood very well about the led so another source is ild which is injection laser diode where i am using injection laser diode in the single mode device in the single mode fibers only so i hope you understood the basics now what is laser laser is a high power optical source which is comparatively costlier than the led but it is giving me a lot of improvements over the leds so we are going to talk in detail about the leds the lasers in the upcoming videos i hope you all are joining me in the upcoming videos really soon i hope you like this video if you like it please push the like button subscribe the channel share it with your friends give me your feedback thank you so much